In this video, I'm gonna show you how to keep your low back from rounding whenever you deadlift. Get up and get down, get up and get hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. If you have a problem with your back rounding during deadlifts, there's usually one or two problems. The first is you're not using your lower body sufficiently. And the second is you're not creating optimal tension within your full body in the start. Now, let's talk about the first one, not using your lower body enough. Even though the deadlift is a hinge motion, there is still a lot of lower body activity that we need. If not, you just end up pulling all with your back. Now, there's two tips that I like to really get optimal lower body activity. The first one is from Chris Bridgeford. He's an elite powerlifter. And what he told me was that he likes to think of the start of the deadlift like a trust fall. You're gonna be driving into the ground with as much tension as you're pulling back, almost like you're performing a leg press. But in this trust fall balanced position of driving and pulling, you're creating optimal tension in the lower body so that when you pull, it's going to allow you to make sure that you're balanced on the way up. So let's come all the way up, driving as hard as you can with as much emphasis as you're pulling back. So a lot of people, their back will round because they're pulling too much with their back and not getting enough leg drive with their lower body. Let's set that down. The second tip to help emphasize enough lower body activity is something that I first learned from Martins Lisi's. Hear what he had to say. I have my back angle set. I squat the weight up, keeping my back angle the same all the way up until the bar gets beyond my patella and then I angle upwards. So two movements in one, squat, RDL, RDL, squat. So the idea is that we can break this uh, deadlift up into two parts. So even though, again, it's a hinge motion, we're starting the squat to the top of the knee as a squat. So it's, again, squat to the top of the knee, driving up, and then RDL to the very top, and then on the way back down, RDL to the top of the knee, and then squat it down from there. So again, understanding optimal lower body activity of driving hard into the ground like it's creating a trust fall, and then also squatting it to the knee, even though it's a hinge, can be very, very helpful for a lot of people with deadlift issues where their back rounds too much. Now, the second tip that can be very helpful for a lot of people whose back rounds during a deadlift is to create full body tension from your fist grabbing the bar all the way throughout the entire body. Lock it in and then start your pull. This is something that I learned from Ed Cohen, the greatest power lifter of all time. Here's some words of wisdom from Ed. Every muscle from my neck down to my lower back gets squeezed and pulled in tight. So as I do that, at the same time, I try to wiggle my hips in closer to the bar under tension. So when I pull my hips, so my glutes activate are already activated and they start being used right away with my hamstrings and back. Most people don't preload their hips enough. They end up using way, way, way too much back. So I, my, my object was, how can I use my whole body into whatever movement I'm doing? Now, one thing that I find very helpful in this bonnet position is to take the slack out of the bar. Now this is, even if you're using an Olympic weightlifting bar, something that you can hear before you start your pull. So what Darren's going to do is start his pull, but not actually move the bar from the ground, and you're gonna hear the weights click into the top of the weight. So pull just a little bit and then he's gonna start his pull. Now, depending on how much weight you have, obviously it's gonna be a little bit louder, but you can hear that those weights click into the top of the plate, or the bar clicks into the top of the plate before he starts his pull. This is called taking the slack out of the bar, and that gives you a good aud uh, audible cue as to whether or not you have taken enough tension uh, into the entire system before you start the pull. Now, if you're using a deadlift bar with some whip, you will actually see the bar bend slightly as you can see in these examples. This principle also applies to Olympic lifts as well. Listen for the tension being taken out of the bar before the snatch. Now, the important thing to understand, guys, with this is a slight round in the back that is maintained is very different than a deadlift where the back moves into more and more flexion. We don't want to create this fear of back flexion, but we want to understand context. There are some power lifters that are able to pull tremendous weights and have a slight curvature of their low back. And overall, 
the, main uh, the spinal position is maintained during the pull. There may be some slight movement, but overall it is locked in and maintained during the entirety of the pull. What we want to avoid is the spine moving into more and more flexion. And the reason this is bad from a uh, performance standpoint is because movement of the low back is bleeding torque. It's bleeding energy into something that could overall be helping you with your performance of standing up. So the more stability we can create here, the better performance we can create. As Dr. Ms. Uh, Stuart McGill always says, proximal stability enhances distal athleticism. So if you have a problem with your back rounding on a deadlift, think about stiffening the core, activating the lower body, creating stiffness of your entire body, like Ed Cohen says, and then start your lift. I hope you guys liked today's video. Um, let me know if you have any questions below. And until next time, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos? These people have lost.